Hello, this is Karma 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 Chameleon from Into the Wilderness. Today we're going to discuss part two of the family basic go bag and ask the question, how long does it take a giraffe to throw up? All right, here's part two, what not to store in your bug out bag. Number one, medication. Uh, medication is usually something you're usually on, on a regular basis and in many cases does not store well. Uh, what I would recommend is talking to your doctor to keep a 60 to 90 day on hand supply. That does not mean he gives you 90 days and when you get down to three days left, you get 90 more that comes in the mail because what if something happens three days before it's out and now you've got to get out? So if you're asking for insulin, to me, that's a reasonable request. Diabetes, 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 diabetes. Be thankful for diabetes. If you're asking for pain meds, you're probably not going to get that. So be smart about what you're asking for. And and let them know why you're asking. Bring bring up that you're seeing, uh, that you're concerned about being cut off from your medication. Number two, Photos and physical, or photos both physical and digital. Look at this photograph. If you have them all on a hard drive, make a note, put it on your bug out bag, grab that hard drive. If you have older photos that are physical photos, have a photo album that you know where it is. I would stick it next to the hard drive so you know, grab it, you grab them both at the same time. And next would be clothing. Give me its key. Which is seasonal. Uh, again, I live in an area where it's 100 in the summer and zero in the winter. So you're going to want one complete change of clothing and have one of them something that you can sleep in, such as sweatpants and a sweatshirt. Next, we go on to toothbrushes and toothpaste. Brush, brush, brush to keep the cavities away. You can get little toothpaste and spare toothbrushes and keep them in your bag. Either way, that's your call. We, we just have a note to grab them if we got to go. Pets. Make sure you grab your pets. Food, water, bowls, medications. I did some research on this one. Uh, pet first aid app on the iPhone. That tells you the hotels that allows animals 365 days a year. In the event of an evacuation or a state of emergency, all hotels must accept pets under the federal law, Pets Evacuation and Transportation Standards Act of 2006. So if you show up somewhere unexpectedly and they give you a hard time, write that down, keep that somewhere that you can rattle that off to them. That is a federal law. They must accept your pets. Uh, while I'm here having advanced hotels, I think th I wrote three to four, two to three in all directions and have them saved in your phone with phone numbers, addresses. So if the grid is up, hit your GPS and you know where to go. I would use the word hotel on each one of them. So if you're searching in a panic, you search your phone for hotel in your contacts and it should bring up the three, uh, three to four, two to three, whatever you choose. Back to number six, cash. Uh, cash, credit cards, debit cards. If, if the grid's up, credit and debit cards work. If the grid's down, you may find places that only want cash. So with cash, you're gonna want small denominators, ones, fives, and tens, and as much as you can. The safe way to keep cash is a money belt. You can get them on eBay for about 30 bucks. You can hide a couple hundred dollars in your belt. And even if you were to lose your bag or get robbed, you still have your money on you. ID and important documents, deeds, titles, insurance, etc. If this is something where you think your house might not be there when you get back, this is a good idea to keep on you. Julia, we got cows. If that's the case, yeah, I'll come back to that. Also, number eight, cell chargers. Keep them in a 12 volt and a 120 volt so you can charge off your vehicle or off of 
uh, wall outlet cables, and USB battery is good to have in the event you can't hook into anything for a while. If you can get the USB batteries with solars, I think they're the best, but USB batteries better than nothing. For children and infants, <laughs> Diapers. The reason you don't keep these in is because if the if you need to leave six months later, your diaper is going to be too small. So the diapers that you currently have on hand, if you have infants, age appropriate food for the children formula. If that's the route you're going, ingredients to make it, and a way to heat it, which you should already have your stove in your bag from the previous episode. You're good. Uh, any kind of pacifier, favorite toys, blanket, and crib. When you check for your hotels and ask if they accept pets, also ask if they have cribs in any of the rooms. Because if you're leaving and you have an infant, it would be very beneficial to have a hotel with a crib. Lastly is, here's some tips. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Twice a year, walk around your house, take a video of everything in your home for insurance. You don't have to make this long uh, do it in two or three minute clips so that you can send these to your email or save them on a zip drive. That way, if your house is gone and you come back, you can prove everything that you owned in the house instead of trying to think off the top of your head. You know, you figure it's thousands of things in your home. Uh, you want to be the first out. Avoid the parking lot. 2006, when Hurricane Katrina blew, blew through, uh, I forget the route number. There was about a 20 mile long parking lot where people wound up riding out the hurricane in their vehicles because they left too late or it was too difficult. There was too many people on the road. I don't want to blame everybody. I don't know the details. Bottom line, be the first out, avoid the parking lot. Lastly, think of and prepare for others. This could be friends, family, or even somebody that you run into that might need help. Uh, the purpose of having multiple bottles with the last episode of water is you might be able to help out a family that wasn't as well prepared in advance as you were. And that's a good thing. We want to help people when there's a problem. I heard of, uh, again, back to Hurricane Katrina, there was people who were selling diapers to women on rooftops for $50 a diaper. And I think that's criminal to do something like that. But people like to take advantage of you in an emergency. Uh, reasons you might need to leave. Could be a local emergency. Could be a family member had to be rushed to a hospital. Wouldn't it be great to have a bag you can grab, go to the hospital if you know you might not, especially if it's child. You might have to stay there a few days with them. And that is it for this episode. Next episode, you're going to discuss advanced items for your bug out bag. Stay tuned and take care. <laughs>